Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. If you're 35 or older and studying for the CP exam, you might have heard that the likelihood of passing is much lower than the younger people. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because we've been out of school for long. Maybe we're just busier than the young people and have more things to worry about, like health, mortgage, children, parents, post-retirement. Or maybe our brains aren't as sharp as younger people. I'm 49 and just passed all four sections in just two months with the average score of 89. These are my official scores. Maybe it's out here, not sure. But as you can see that I got 88 on Autumn Reg and 90 on Beck and Far. Not bad for a 49 year old, right? By the way, English is my second language, as you can tell, and I'm not smart either. I barely graduated from college with 2.9 GPA and I've actually given up CPA exam once 25 years ago because I thought I wasn't smart enough. One of the success factors was I don't work full time, although I'm quite busy with other things, probably equivalent to working about 30 hours a week. But I think the bigger factor was how I studied for it and some of the techniques that I used to save time and memorize things. Anyway, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Here's how I studied step by step. Step number one. I set a very aggressive timeline. Maybe we can't retain memory for a long time like we used to, so I thought I needed to pass very quickly before I forget everything I learned or lose motivation or something happens that would distract me from studying. So I set a very aggressive timeline. Now I look back and think that was the first key to the success. Numero dos. I watched videos in one and a half speed and didn't take any notes while watching. I heard videos are better than the textbooks because you're watching and hearing at the same time. So you're using two of your five senses, which helps you remember things better. And I never stopped or reminded, even when I missed something or didn't understand. And again, I didn't take any notes at this stage and just try to finish all the videos as quickly as possible. The reason we shouldn't take any notes at this stage is because we don't know what's important yet. So we would just be wasting time writing unimportant things. Step number three. After finishing all the videos, I did all the MCQs in random order from the very beginning. I believe all the test banks are programmed to give you more questions on the heavily tested areas if you do it randomly. So you'd be allocating more time to important areas than going through chapter by chapter. And this is why I use the textbooks and notebooks the most. I started from 10 questions at a time and spent time on questions that I missed or got correct for a wrong reason by reading explanations, often going to the textbooks and taking notes. As I get more questions correct, I increase to 20 questions at a time and later to 30. So it'll be similar to the actual test lab. FII, I used Roger's CPA review course, which was really good. I also use Kessler's Ultimate CPA Exam Guide, which is like a mentoring and tutoring program, and I love that too. I'm not paid to promote them, I wish I was, but I'm really glad I chose them. Kessler also started their own review course, so I use that as a supplement test bank. If you run out of the questions in your main review course, I recommend to buy a supplement test bank. Because if you do the second round, you won't know if you understood the concept or just remember the correct answers. The supplement test banks have similar but different questions, so you have to understand the concept in order to answer correctly. I also used Ninja and it was pretty good too. Both Kessler and Ninja are monthly subscriptions, so if you pass quickly, you'd pay very little. I've actually used one other test bank which I don't recommend, but won't say which one it was. But if you really want to know, leave me a comment below and I'll tell you secretly. Step number four. Once I became comfortable with the MCQs, then I did a lot of TBS and research questions and nothing special here. Just practice, practice and practice. And also I watched the cram lectures. If your review course has one, I would recommend to watch it again on one and a half speed without taking notes. It's a good memory refresher. Step number five. I tracked my progress on MCQs. I usually started around 60% correct and got to about 80% right before the exam. When I couldn't get the percentage high enough, I rescheduled the exam just by a few days. 
Step number six. I did the exam simulation at the same time of the day as the actual exam and set the room temperature the same as the prometric, which is 72 degrees. So I know how my body and brain function in the actual test environment and also to know what to wear to the exam. Step number seven. On the day before the exam, I only did the MCQs that I missed, the difficult ones. This may sound like a bad idea because you're supposed to relax the day before, but remember, I'm already at 80% at this point. So if I get these correct, it'll be extra points above 80. And even if I miss it again, the chances are I get them correct on the actual exam because my memory is fresh. So I was very relaxed when I was doing this. And actually, I took all the exams at noon, so I did this in the morning of the exam day as well. That's pretty much it. And here's the summary. I think number two and number seven are kind of unique, but I think those are the most important points, especially for us over 35 years old with short memory. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the memorization and note-taking technique, but that itself can be like 10 minutes, so I'll create another video for that. I hope this was helpful. If you thought it was, please give me a thumbs up. And I would also appreciate if you could subscribe as well and watch the next video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And I wish you all a success in your exam.